Armstrong, and we can't say enough right now about the play of 34-year-old Kyle Lowry putting his team on his back in game number three, another stellar performance in game number four. But Jack, we have seen this throughout the years, and explain why Kyle Lowry is truly the greatest Raptor of all time. Uh, Kate, first of all, I agree with your point about the fact that he is the greatest Raptor of all time. Uh, I've been calling Raptor games for 22 years of their 25-year existence. I've seen an overwhelming number of the games, and I've been around these guys personally uh, during that whole time. And I think too often we get too caught up in the statistical analysis. And the statistical analysis is, in and of itself, a, a good barometer and a fair barometer, but nonetheless, it doesn't tell the entire story. And more importantly, it doesn't tell the accurate story. The accurate story comes down to a few things. Winning, and number two in my book, uh, what I see with my eyes, what I feel in my heart, what I feel as well, most importantly, in my gut. When I look out there and I go, that guy's a ball player. That guy makes the other four guys better. That guy impacts winning. That guy stands for something a whole lot more than what's on a piece of paper and that's in black and white. Uh, life is about gray, not black and white. It's, it's kind of somewhere in between. And when I, when I watch a player and I judge a player and, and I look and say, you know, why does his team win and why does the other team not win? It's because of a guy taking charges, a guy diving on loose balls, who sets screens, who boxes out, who's willing to stick his nose in there and get a big rebound when it really matters, who makes the big shot when you need it made, who makes the big play to get the ball to somebody else to make the big play, who has the understanding, a, a true mental connection and an off the charts understanding of how to play the game where he can literally coach it on the floor. You know, we, we, there was a lot of discussion about Steve Nash. Well, I always felt a guy like Steve Nash and Jason Kidd, when they played the game, could coach and be player coaches. I had this conversation with Lenny Wilkins. Lenny was the last player coach we had in the NBA, by the way, a Hall of Famer on two counts. And th the job has changed a lot. But there's no question in my mind, when I look at Kyle Lowry, I put him in the Jason Kidd, uh, Steve Nash category. There's no question. He could be an NBA head coach if he ever wanted to be. He has that understanding of the entire picture. Uh, it's like the quarterback who masters the whole concept of all 22. Uh, you know, we've had the good fortune of watching Tom Brady. I'm a Bills fan. Nonetheless, the guy's a savant. He's unbelievable. And again, when you look at a guy like Kyle Lowry, is he the best player in the NBA? Is he one of the top 10, 15 players, best players in the NBA right now? Probably not. But nonetheless, just because he doesn't win the beauty contest doesn't mean that when you look at the Raptors that have had the best record in the NBA the last five years and they have a championship and they have a resume of accomplishment, where does that come from? Why does it happen? Well, I'll tell you why it happens. Because Kyle Lowry, number seven, the guy that should have his number retired first and have a statue in front of the Scotiabank Arena, that's why it should happen. And you're so right. Stats don't tell the whole story at all when it comes to Kyle Lowry. You cannot teach heart, and he has so much of it. And like you, I cannot wait to see the number seven jersey go up into the rafters one day. Thank you, the coach, Jack Armstrong.